So I am very excited to introduce to you guys this week, Jason C. Brown. I'm guessing we have to add the C in there because there's Jason Brown's a somewhat common name. <laughs> Very common. But Jason C. Brown is unique in the fact that he has basically paved way for kettlebells becoming mainstream, I feel like, in America. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's quite a lot there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I say that because my listeners and stuff know that um, I've recently just got started into kettlebell training about a month ago. My yes. husband and I finally made it, and um, we've been toying with them for years. But whenever I go to YouTube or Google, like most people do, and to pull up some videos, it was like you showing moves or some Russian guys showing some moves. <laughs> My English was probably a little bit better. Your English is a little bit better. So thank you for, for the help on that. So I wanted to have you on and talk about your kettlebell training and kind of feminize it a little bit because it can be scary, but I don't think that it should be something that just women should avoid because of this machoism that I feel like is come kind of wrapped up into it sometimes. Yes, and Taylor, one thing I'll do when we, we actually uh, stop speaking is I'll send you an email with some very old photos okay. of the wide spectrum of individuals that that use kettlebells for their mm -hmm. conditioning. And one of them is, it's called Iron Babushka, right? <laughs> That's old. an awesome name. Uh, yeah, it is, isn't it? It's, uh, I'm not sure if she's Russian, but she's definitely of Eastern European descent. You can just tell by where she is. But she's at a carnival or like some type of festival. And this could be, so I'm, I'm Slovak and German and, and stuff like that. So my grandmothers were called Babas, right? Okay. So my, looks like my Baba lifting a huge kettlebell, but you can see all these little grandkids around her. You can see some people. Oh, with, that's so funny. Woody. So, and I also have a, a lot of photos of, they are men, but they're older men, like mm -hmm. people that I would consider my grandfather. So a lot of a wide spectrum of individuals can use kettlebells. Right. And that's one reason why this former Soviet Union actually chose to include them within their physical education setting mm -hmm. is because a very small percentage of individuals get hurt when they kettlebell train. It's something like, and these are elite kettlebell folks, guys that guys and get girls that train, you know, three to four hours a day for the sport of kettlebell training. Mm -hmm. They get hurt maybe 8% of the time, whereas field sports, soccer, American football, all those are 40 percentile. Right. And training. even just using barbells and dumbbells is higher than 8%. Right. Right. Okay. Well, that's really interesting, and I like how you brought up the fact that it was introduced into the Soviet Union, so you clearly know the history. Was it during the time of, um, it was war training, right, for the soldiers originally? The first time it actually appeared in their dictionary was 1704. Wow. And the word is actually of Persian origin, which means heavy, so the word giria. Uh -huh. At least in my research, that's what it says is of Persian, Persian origin, which means heavy. And... Um, Actually, in 1985, though, I think it's 85 or 84, I'll have to check my numbers again, they, they formed a commission, an actual kettlebell commission. Mm -hmm. That would be like America having a dumbbell commission or something, right? Right. And uh, one of them, one of the things was uh, a broad spectrum of the population could train with them. The other one was the lower incidence of injury. The other one was pretty much... It was the ease of technique, but also the availability. Like who couldn't uh, who couldn't find a hunk of iron, right. right? As opposed to what your point with the barbells. Barbells can be if you train at home, they take up a lot of space, they take up right. a lot of money. And if you don't have someone there to spot you, you get yourself in a bad situation from time to time. <laughs> Correct, exactly. So, uh, um, 1985 is when they actually formed that commission and really started pushing it. But before that, they were always part of like. Um, folk festivals and their they, yeah. juggling was a huge part of it so it was part of their you know get togethers right almost like and part of their renaissance it seems like <laughs> yes yes and there's actually they do have a, a russian performer within i'm not sure which one circus soleil but uh his name is d cool d-i-k-u-l and mm -hmm. he, he does it but it it's very popular within the russian military as well mm -hmm. And um, also in World War II, there's many photos of um, Germans using them as well. Mm -hmm. 
So it wasn't just Russia, it was all that whole Eastern Europe. Right. Area. Cool. Well, how clearly, since you are from Philly, which go Eagles, my husband's from Philly. Okay. Um, how I'm did actually you... a Pittsburgh Steeler fan. So. Oh, no. Oh. I'm not originally from Philly, but your husband will understand. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. um, so how, how did you get into kettlebell training? How was it introduced to you? So I was training, I also do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. And I was training with a gentleman by the name of Stephen Maxwell, who had the first Brazilian Jiu Jitsu studio in Philadelphia, pretty much the entire East Coast. And he was a huge physical culturist as well. And he actually had, I can send you a photos of these also, Taylor, if you want them. He had kettlebells made. Um, it was like nine, it was really, really early. Uh, one of his clients was a um, machine shop. Mm -hmm. Like welder? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And he took these huge big ball bearings and welded a handle onto them. So he had his first homemade uh, version. And Steve was always influenced by Russian Russian um, sports science, and I was always influenced by Russian sports science. So when Steve had those made, I you know, obviously bugged Steve to mm -hmm. play around with them. So Steve showed me. And then Steve became friends with Pavel Satsalim, who started the Russian Kettlebell Challenge, okay. uh, RKC. Mm -hmm. And uh, Steve had Pavel come out and teach a few workshops on bodyweight training and kettlebell training, and uh, it just grew from there. That's awesome. And then you just found that passion and let yourself grow with it as well? I remember before knowing what they were, looking <laughs> at these homemade things that Steve had on the floor and like, what is that? I really want to play with that thing. <laughs> just and, let me uh, get my hands on that for two seconds. <laughs> right. And I had no idea what I was doing, but then Steve showed me and uh, it's sort of like, it clicked. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I want to talk a little bit more is more the structure of the kettlebell because I feel like a lot of times when they were first coming out, even myself included, I saw them as like, oh, it's just an overpriced weight. It's just an overpriced dumbbell. Right. And it's only been in the past year or so that I've really realized like, no, that's not the case at all. So can you kind of explain what makes it so different? What, what are the benefits of using that versus the other normal weights we see around? Sure. Can, can I use scientific? Please, I'm a biology major, so yeah, go for it. <laughs> so a kettlebell possesses something called a longer moment arm mm -hmm. of resistance, or it's some biomechanics schools will use the word lever arm. Okay, right? yep. So the center of gravity when you use a dumbbell is here mm -hmm. within your palm. A kettlebell, when you hold the kettlebell, and I have a video for this, I can send it to you, Taylor. When you okay. hold a kettlebell, the center of gravity is extended somewhere maybe six to eight inches, depending on the size of the kettlebell or whether you're using a competitive kettlebell or not, right? So center of gravity in a dumbbell is here. Center of gravity in the kettlebell is extended. It's an extended moment arm of resistance. So the resistance is further away from the fulcrum, being your shoulder, being your elbow, whatever you want to consider the fulcrum in this example. Right. When something is further away from the fulcrum, it requires more resistance. Mm -hmm. So moving a 35 pound kettlebell, because it's longer, requires more effort right. on your behalf to move it as it would a 35 pound dumbbell. A real easy example I use for, and maybe this works better for males, is, is choking up on a baseball bat. If you're all the way down at, a, at the end of the bat, it's, it's not, you're at a mechanical disadvantage. Right. If you poke up, you move closer to the center of gravity and it helps your swing. It makes it quicker, it makes it more powerful. Right. So the dumbbell would actually be a closer or shorter center or shorter moment arm of resistance choking up. The kettlebell would be choking down. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. I'm having visions of physics come back into my head. <laughs> and, and just to use some real world examples, like what if you uh, shovel snow, you move your hand down towards the end of the shovel. You don't mm -hmm. keep both hands up here because you just don't have the leverage. You move right. closer to the center of gravity, right? Right. Another cool thing about kettlebells though, not only is it a longer moment arm of uh, resistance, it's also variable, mm -hmm. which means sometimes, you know, when you do your snatches and your cleans, it will be higher than the hand. 
but when you come into the rack position, it will be shorter, and it's called variable because somewhere along that range of motion, it is constantly changing, and that helps. That's a great little thing for like intermuscular coordination and intramuscular right. coordination and recruiting all the cool little things that we want recruit it. Mm -hmm. right? I love that. And I recently read one of your articles um, that I think was published in Men's Health, I want to say, um, talking about how if you're just trying to get stronger, if that's your ultimate goal, then yes, go with the barbells, go with the dumbbells. But if your goal is to overall be more powerful, to be stronger, to burn fat, then get with the kettlebells because though they're a weight, they're not meant to just be pumped out with six reps. They're meant to be high reps, longer yes, endurance right. training. Correct, yeah. The traditional kettlebell training is high repetition training. Very rarely will you see three swings. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. if you're training with a power athlete or somebody that needed that type of training or focus, sure, you can program in three swings, but usually you're going to see swings for a minute. Right. And, and your then, butt and hips, everything's going to be burning. <laughs> right. Lungs, legs. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, for someone just getting started into kettlebells or thinking about it, what do you recommend is their first move that they should kind of start with in progressing? It's actually a Romanian deadlift. Really? Yes. Well, okay. I say Romanian just so people are more familiar with those mechanics. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I use, I use the word Romanian so people understand that it's a hip dominant deadlift. Right. Not one that maybe has more knee flexion. Mm -hmm. I want to see people sit back with their hips. I want to see them keep their shins relatively vertical. Mm -hmm. And I want it to be posterior chain dominant, which means glutes and hamstrings. So I like to see them do that first body weight. Mm -hmm. I want to see that beautiful hip hinge without any external load. And then when they, can, when they have that mastered, then we move into a slower, more controlled movement, the deadlift. Okay. Once they master the deadlift, or very proficient within the deadlift, then we'll move to the faster, sexier things like the swings. Right. And then the cleans and all that sort of stuff. Matches and all that good stuff. Right, right. Now, one question that I get asked all the time from my clients and through online is how much, and this is not a yes or no answer, but how much weight should I be lifting? And of course, everybody's so different. But if someone were to go out and invest in, let's say, three kettlebells, what do you, what's kind of the best range to start? Are we talking grabbing? women? Yes. I would go somewhere around 15, 25, and 35. 35? If you could afford three, I would go 15, 25, 35. Okay. I think many skills are actually easier to learn with a heavier weight. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, for example, the swings. I think you need a certain amount of weight to recruit the glutes well, to recruit the hamstrings well. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to achieve that with a 15-pound kettlebell. Likewise, with the cleans and snatches, you may not need the 35-pound bell, but those are also easier to learn with a heavier weight. Right, because otherwise you're just naturally, it's so light that you just fling it up there and you're not getting that right range of motion. Right, the heavier weight recruits better technique. Right. Hmm. Okay, speaking of technique, this is a more of a... For you guys, if y'all looked at my YouTube video that I posted up actually today, I don't know if you can see, but I have some itty bitty wrist and because of that I've been having some issues with bruising. What do you recommend to help strengthen the wrist and to not get bruises? <laughs> I would have to see your form first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All but right, I'm definitely making some kettlebell videos anyway, so. Okay, awesome, send them over. <laughs> um, so there's a couple different forms that you can work on with the kettlebells and there's one that where the bell goes up and over the wrist. Mm -hmm which is very common, and there's one where the bell moves completely, revolves compl completely around the outside of the wrist, and that's why I said I would need to see your form first. Okay. Because although you can use the technique that goes up and over the hand very mm -hmm. well and there wouldn't be an impact, it's usually more time efficient and helps minimize that bruising if you were to learn the one that goes around the wrist right from the start. Okay, because I can tell you, I, I do over the wrist. You go over and I'm the working wrist. on my, you know, grip form is so important so that it doesn't, you can control it. So I'm definitely working on my grip strength as well. Okay. But, 
Okay, I'll have to look look into that. <laughs> yes, a round is a lot easier to avoid that that impact on the wrist. Mm -hmm. And even the kettlebell competitors and and the women are great, better competitors than the men. Taylor, the women are just have great. a better finesse. You think? Better finesse, and they're just tougher. <laughs> they're just tougher, and the, a kettlebell sport requires a lot of. Um, a term that I say most stability, which is the combination of motion and stability. Mm -hmm. Women possess that much more than, than guys. Guys are usually tight in the shoulders and the upper back. Women, once they get that kettlebell fixed on the, in the overhead position, you guys can just chill there forever, right? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I'm also seeing the difference with my husband, Dan, and I. I feel like my obliques are stronger than his, mm -hmm. so I can kind of have more... I'm able to keep up a little bit more with him. He goes, oh, my abs are really starting to feel this already. And I feel that that's a man-woman thing sometimes too, to be honest. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> you guys are just tougher. That's right. That's what I like to say as well. So there are actual kettlebell competitions, like in the States? There are in the States, um, all across Eastern Europe as well. Mm -hmm. uh, have you ever done one? I have. Yeah. Way back in the day before the competition was very, very uh, um, well run. Mm -hmm. I remember one time in Virginia, we, we went and uh, we were supposed to do it at a Y in Virginia. And they, at the last minute, they said, no, you can't do it in here. So we did it out on the grass. <laughs> it wasn't the best um, surface. I right. think, you know, it was dewy in the morning and the, the grass was wet. And But uh, I, I did play around with some of them in the beginning. That's very cool. Do you feel like with um, MMA fighting and everything getting as popular as it has, that it's kind of also brought some popularity to kettlebell training? I, I do, definitely. They're very popular within MMA conditioning circles, for sure. Mm -hmm. And, of course, CrossFit and everything as well. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, what do you, what's your favorite type of training when you're not using kettlebells? Do you cross-train at all? I cross-train every day. Yeah. And, um, most of my training now is uh, body weight. If I do use barbells, it's, I actually don't use barbells very often at all. The only other type of tool I'll use are dumbbells, kettlebells, body weight, huge body weight fan, and a trap bar for my deadlifts. Okay. And does your wife follow the same for, uh, type of training? No. <laughs> <laughs> she likes her spinning. Uh huh. Really I'll say all, all of us women like to go against our husband, I feel like, a little bit. <laughs> She does. We have a little shed in the backyard that I call the strength garden and uh, she goes out there and I give her a little bit of, so it's it's usually like, a, we don't use the TRX, we use jungle gyms, mm -hmm. um, jungle gym XT, but she, she she does do some circuits that I design, but uh -huh. she likes to do her own thing also. So. Gotcha. Well, I'm so glad that you actually brought up your um, the gym garden because my husband has, he follows you on Facebook and had heard about it and was curious to find out more about your garden. What exactly right. is it? It's a, uh, it's well, the inside is a 200 square foot shed that I built. I didn't build it. Home Depot, <laughs> the Home Depot kit. I can't build anything. And um, I put mat space down there, like a little mm -hmm. mat, so my sons could play there as well. And do you know what a gladiator wall is? I don't think so. It's a, uh, have you ever seen those bars that go horizontally up a wall? They're very common within gymnastics. They're called stall bars. Yes, I was a gymnast. Yep. Okay, awesome. So it's one of those, but it's a little more, it's like a Mercedes version of those because it has a pull-up bar, an extended pull-up bar. Okay. So I attached one of those to the wall and outside within the actual garden, the actual nature part, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a, have you heard of Rogue Fitness? Yes. Yes, they have a, a great little, it's called the Castro rig, mm -hmm. which is 15 feet high. It, I, add, I added some spice to it. I got the, the flying pull-up bar, which is like a monkey bars that go off at a 45 degree angle. Okay, cool. I got the dip station. I have mm -hmm. the one side is 18 feet high that I have ropes hanging from for my sons. My sons are better movers than I am. So. I'll say, what a great environment to grow up in. <laughs> I try. That's awesome. So you guys make it a family affair. Yes. And it's all about, and I was reading one of your posts before as well, that you're so a huge believer that exercise should be fun. And to me, it sounds just like it's recess in your, at your house. It is. It's pretty much a 
reset. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Taylor, I'm going to steal that from you. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm sitting here going, wow, I can't wait to have a backyard. I know that that's what Dan wants to create too. So I think that's really, right. it's really so cool. easy. And are you a mother? No, not yet. <laughs> It's really hard for parents to find time. So my thing was I need to put – and people define success however they they do individually. But I needed to put my training right in front of me in order to do it because as parents – and you know, you're not even a parent. But how how busy do you get during the day, right? Exactly. It's crazy. Right. It's crazy. And that just gets multiplied by – hundreds if you're a parent. So I needed to be a space where I could walk out the door mm-hmm. and there are my pull-up bars, there's my dips, there are my rings, there are my kettlebells. It's right, I have no excuse. Even right. if I had to chunk up my time into, you know. 10 minute high intervals. Right, right. For walk sure. out the door, get it done, walk back in, refocus. I think work. that's a great, great thing for everybody because the woman watching this Women, you know, you're busy, Dad. Women are terrible at making time because they're, you know, wanting to please their husbands, needing to do this, needing to take care of the kids. But when it's right, there's no excuse, you know. At the end of the day, if you want it, you got to make it happen. Right, and I take, as you mentioned earlier, I take them right outside with me. I do have an eight-month-old, so I take out my wife won't let me put him in the grass yet. <laughs> he eats the grass, so I understand. But um, I just put him on a big blanket, and he can chill there. Mm -hmm. I'm able to watch him from the pull-up bars if he gets into anything, but he's happy to be outside watching the birds, watching the squirrels. I'll do a set, make sure he's okay, come back, do a set. So it's really, you know, for new mothers out there, new parents out there, you can find a way to do it. And it it may, the the shed was not cheap, Mm -hmm. but there's always cheaper alternatives that you can you know. Right. No one needs to be. Well, I mean, I'm in a condo and we have a pull-up bar that anytime you have to walk into the bedroom, you've got to do pull-ups to enter the room or we keep the kettlebells in the living room. So if we're sitting around, you can grab some kettlebells and throw, you know, do a couple of swings. Now, I also have some marks on my ceiling from that. But, right. but again, if you want it, you can make it happen. I would put the pull-up bar on the bathroom door, Taylor. Yeah, we do get pretty creative of trying to get everything figured out in the bedroom so we only have to go in there once or twice. Right, right. <laughs> Bathroom would make it a little bit harder to avoid, or I guess. Kitchen. Or kitchen. Well, yeah, kitchen doesn't have a – we can't do it to the kitchen. Oh, no. There's okay. no do- doorway. <laughs> so that's funny. Um, now, in terms – going back to the kettlebells, what would you say are the five best benefits that you could get from doing a kettlebell tra- – starting kettlebell training? Awesome. So not necessarily physical, but I think what we were talking about earlier, availability, mm-hmm. right? So one very small footprint for those individuals, those mothers that live in a condo and don't have the space, right? Right. Footprint, tiny little footprint, tuck it within, availability, accessibility, mm-hmm. short, intense workouts. I think they're one of the best tools that can train, I think, for example, barbells can get you strong, but they don't necessarily – you're not going to be doing windmills with a right. barbell, right? You're not going to be doing – unless you're – you're not going to be doing Turkish get-ups with a barbell unless no. you're a real geek and you love that type of stuff. But right. that's usually like an alpha male type of thing, right? right? But for a kettlebell, it's beautiful. Another benefit I think is something that I call kettlebell flows. Mm-hmm. And just from the inherent design of the kettlebell, I think it works very well. So you go into a snatch, then you perfectly go right into a windmill. You don't have to change positions. You don't have to set the weight down, pick something else up. You can just flow from movement to movement. And it allows you, I'm all about individual expression, it allows you to express yourself however you want. You, you design your own. Called, you sound like, oh, it's, you sound really cool because I feel like you could combine almost like yoga beliefs with the kettlebell. and. I really think you can. Mm-hmm. I think you can. And I think certain moves that are – they're not they're not solely of the kettlebell culture. Right. You can definitely do them with dumbbells if you wanted to. But like the Turkish getup is very yoga-esque, mm-hmm. right? The windmill – are you familiar with windmills, Taylor? Yes. Yeah, right. Windmills, I mean – they're beautiful, mm-hmm. right? They're graceful. The same with the Turkish getup, and you can make more. You can combine them in ways with more powerful moves that you get the you get the you get the high heart rate, 
But then when you include them or, or, or build flows around explosive moves and those more elegant moves, then you, it's, it's, it's beautiful. And you just have fun with it. You just grab it and you just do right. what, what comes to you at the time. Right. Set a timer for three minutes and say, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do whatever comes, comes to me. And it's That's great. One swing, one clean, one snatch, one windmill. I'll drop it down to my shoulder. I'll do a squat. There's no, there are camps out there that say, no, you must do 10 minutes of snatches. No, you must do repetition, repetition, repetition. Right. But that's not my school of thought. Taylor yeah. trains differently than I do. I train differently than my brother, my wife. Right. And my, I can tell you now, I run a woman's boot camp. And if I were to say, hey, we're going to do 10 minutes of swings, they would look at me and be like, peace. I'm bored already just hearing that. You know? <laughs> I, yes, it's true. It's reality. It's a reality. So tell me a little bit more about your kettlebell certification that you've developed. Um, it's called kettlebell. Kettlebell athletics is the, the kettlebell branch of my my business, mm -hmm. and it's geared towards. Um, we have. I'm adding a level this year. It's actually somewhere in the middle. It's, I'm going to call it 1.5. Okay. And um, three different levels. The first one is just. Um, it's called forming the foundations of flow. And it's learning those basics, not only learning them, but knowing how to coach those for individuals as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll go, we'll break down the swing into detail. We'll show you all the little, most common errors and how to correct those most common errors in the swing. We'll okay. give you a couple different swing variations. The forming the foundations of flow is just the basics. So it's the swings, clean, snatches. Of course, we do teach a couple different variations of snatches. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, we teach the associated sciences, the biomechanics, the kinesiology, anatomy. Okay. So after you've taken the certification one, are you eligible to run kettlebell classes from that, or do you need to be? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's cool. Do you have to be a certified personal trainer? You don't, but no. we do offer CEUs. Oh, do you? Yeah, we do okay. for NASM, um, ACE, and as National Strength and Conditioning Association as well. Cool. And are those courses held only in Philly, or do you kind of go, are there other Anywhere, places anywhere. around? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. All right, because I know Dan, they, my husband writes for the blog and everything as well, and he's actually thinking about it. So All right. had, to, had to make sure to hit, pick your brain a little bit. Yes. <laughs> um, we're going to start wrapping up in just a minute, because I know it's getting a little bit late, but I did want to call you out. It might make you a little rosy-eyed, but as I was doing my research earlier, and I'm actually going to pull it up on my computer so that Aww. they'll be able to see. Mr. Jason Brown here was voted one of the top 50 hottest trainers in America. So here he is on Shape Magazine. Taylor, I'm so, <laughs> you are blushing. So now, when was that? I don't know, maybe two months ago. Oh, really? So it's fresh. I was I was trying to look for a date. I was like, I hope that's not from two years ago. <laughs> oh, this year. Oh, congratulations! Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, did your wife tell you don't get a big head from that? <laughs> uh, I'm not. She she was very proud of it, but I think she felt my embarrassment as well. Yeah. You know. Do you ever see, um, do now women recognize you a little bit more from? No. No? <laughs> that's too funny. Well, that's quite an accomplishment, something that you should be proud of. <laughs> you know, that's how I can always, when I found that, I was like, oh, the women are just going to love him. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so every podcast that I do, I always end it with a very quick section of favorites, where I just ask a question and you say whatever first thing that pops into your mind. Okay, great. So you game, you ready? Yes. All right, your favorite post-workout fuel? Ooh, probably banana. Banana for the potassium? Yes. Favorite kettlebell exercise? Uh, great one, windmill. Windmill? I was going to say, do not say the Turkish get up. <laughs> well, that's, that's your least favorite? Uh, yes, I think my favorite right now is actually kettlebell burpees. Mm. I'm liking them. Let's see. Favorite thing to do in Philly? Favorite thing to do in Philly? Probably walk along uh, the river. There's two two little drives along the river that you can mm -hmm. do. There's West River Drive and East or Kelly Drive. Uh -huh. It's a beautiful little dogwood trees and the paths are very popular on the weekends where people run and ride their bikes. Probably mm -hmm. probably go there. 
And that's where um, on the squeakle, is that what? Uh, um, Google? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> where all, you see all the rowers and stuff too. It's yes, really, yes, really yes. cool to see. Yep. Yeah. My, my in laws oh, live on um, at Valley Forge. Okay. So we love going and hiking and running there. Yep. Old House Row, very famous. Yeah. Yep. Uh, favorite workout song? Ooh, I don't know if I have one. <laughs> favorite. Sorry, so I'm going to leave you hanging on that one. You're going to leave me hanging on that one? Um, let's see. Favorite fitness apparel brand? You know what? I wear a lot of MMA shorts. Okay. Because I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so the, the company would be Jiu-Jitsu Pro Gear. Jiu-Jitsu Pro Gear. Jiu-Jitsu Pro Gear. And any t male, any t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I'm not picky. Do you have a particular blog that you love to read yourself? I have several. Okay, um, what's your top two? Top two. They're getting right. a free shout out right now. <laughs> Exuberantanimal.com. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just posted, I know we became friends today, right, on Facebook? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so I, I just posted a link from that gentleman. His name is Frank Ferencic. I was it's, reading that article. Mm -hmm. Yes, I really like that because he sort of encompasses the whole picture, big picture regarding health as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, ooh, there's so many of them. I really like reading the, the writings of Ido Portal. Do you know Ido Portal? No, I haven't heard of him. I-D-O and then portal, like our word portal. Okay. He's actually from Israel and uh, he's a big hand balancer, but he was also a capoeira player. Mm -hmm. you know what capoeira is. Oh yeah, my husband used to do it. Okay, awesome. So it's Ido Portal. I really enjoy reading his writings. His blog is not up currently, but he writes a lot on Facebook. Okay. And um, it just talks about his theories on movement I really love like a lot of people can move tons of weight on the barbell but they can't mm -hmm. really move they're so specialized that they can't function outside of that right content. all right I'll definitely have to check both of those out thank you yeah. and let's see last but not least do you have a particular favorite kettlebell do you have any of the fancy my husband wants the one with the gorilla have you seen the gorilla yes from Joe Rogan yes <laughs> Uh, I actually had one called um, Demon Bells. I had one of those. I sold it. Actually, I gave it to as a gift for, for a facility that hosted one of my certifications. I don't. I still like Dragon Door Bells quite a lot. But I also like the uh, competitive kettlebells that I – that performbetter.com. Perform so, Better, okay. Yeah, Perform Better. And I really like Perform Better because they have – whether – they have everything for everybody. So if you like the solid black ones, they offer solid black ones. If you like the ones with the polyurethane color coating, color. Mm -hmm. they have those even with the little rubber stoppers. And then they have the competitive kettlebells for maybe the more, more it, the individual more concerned with competition. Right. Okay, cool. Well, awesome. And how can people get more from you? You can go to kettlebellathletics.com mm -hmm. or um, the site is not ready yet, so don't go there yet. But you can <laughs> strengthgarden.com. Oh, so this is going to be a new launch for you? It will be a new launch for me. Yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Okay. All right. Well, let me know when it is and we'll post it up and spread the word for you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> Absolutely. And then are you still posting stuff on YouTube pretty regularly? Pretty regularly, but also I built that shed in the backyard so I could do, I didn't have to go anywhere to film. Oh, nice. <laughs> so I'll be doing much more of that now that uh, I have that set up. Okay, great. Well, I'll make sure to put all those links below as well. Excuse me? Anything you want to see specifically? Specifically, there's all, I'm still fresh, just learning, so I would love to see just in general. Um, hmm, I don't know. I'll have to think on that one. I'll, okay. get, I'll get you some tips because I need you to also send me those videos you're talking about, that, or the pictures. I will. The before and after pictures, and we'll go from there. All right. Beautiful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason. It was a pleasure to talk with you. I appreciate it. This pleasure was mine. Taylor, thank you.